Today, I have the great pleasure of talking to, in my opinion, a figure so key to Namibian offshore exploration that it's hard to imagine the recent successes without the contribution of Dr. Marcia Rusha Mello. For those less familiar with Namibian offshore exploration, to date, there have only been 24 offshore exploration wells. And of those, only 10 have been drilled in water deeper than 1,000 meters. So to put that into context, that's 10 wells in water depths between 1,000 and 3,000 meters over an area of about 130,000 square kilometers. To look at it another way, it's only 10 wells in an area the size of Mississippi. So very few wells have been drilled to date with even fewer testing the deep and ultra deep water areas. And Dr. Mello is responsible for three of those wells. One might argue that without the technical discovery at uh, Vinhat or the identification of oil generating source rock systems and source rock and reservoir elements at Moosehead Marumbe, other explorers may have continued to bypass Namibia with comments like no salt, no oil, or if Namibia has hydrocarbon potential, it's probably gas. Um, so let me take you back. In 1991, Dr. Mello published a paper comparing the petroleum systems of the South Atlantic, hypothesizing about the significant geological similarities between the Brazilian and West African deep water coasts, hydrocarbon potentials. In the years that followed, there were a slew of discoveries in Angola and the Low Congo Basin, um, confirming the theory, but with only a few shallow water wells drilled in Namibia, there were no oil discoveries. Uh, just the coup de dry gas uh, discovery made by Chevron in, in 1974. In 2000, uh, Marshall published his first AAPG memoir, which included a study comparing the sister basins in Brazil and Namibia, the Santos and the Orange Subbasin respectively, and providing clear examples of almost perfect petroleum system analogues. For example, both basins feature lacrostrine and marine source rocks, uh, similar oil types, almost identical depositional environments, traps associated with basement highs, and effective vertical migration pathways via normal fault networks. It should be mentioned that there are some differences, the lack of an Aptian salt section and a higher thermal maturity along the Namibian coast. But beyond that, the basins do indeed share almost identical petroleum system elements and processes, supporting Marshall's call to go deeper in both South Atlantic basins. So let me formally introduce Dr. Marcia Rush Mello. Dr. Mello is the former president of HRT Petroleum and HRT Oil and Gas, today Petro Rio, the company that arguably opened up Namibian deep water exploration. Prior to founding HRT, Dr. Mello spent 24 years working with Petrobras, where he became head of uh, Petrobras Geochemistry Group, uh, SEGEQ in 1981. In 1988, he received his PhD in petroleum geochemistry from Bristol University in England. And in 1996, he formed and led the first center of excellence for Petrobras, considered one of the best petroleum geochemistry uh, laboratories in the world. Dr. Mello pioneered the go deeper theory regarding the pre-salt discoveries in the Santos Basin and today is considered one of the leading oil geochemists in the world. Dr. Marsha has received awards from the AAPG and the ABGP on several occasions and developed specialized studies regarding petroleum systems in sedimentary basins across Latin America and West Africa, and has published over 300 geology and geochemistry papers. Last year during the IMAGE conference in Denver, Dr. Mello launched the AAPG memoir 124 entitled The Supergiant Lower Cretaceous Pre-Salt Petroleum System of the Santos Basin, Brazil, which is considered the most up-to-date and complete publication regarding the supergiant Santos Basin. Dr. Mello is the founder and president of the Brazilian EMP service company, BPS, 
with branches in the US, London and Germany. Marcia, you have long been touting Namibia as a land of giants, and now with Shell and Total Energy's back-to-back -back discoveries, your predictions have been proven. Uh, I would really like to hear your thoughts on the rest of the Southwest African Coastal Basin. Uh, talk us through your experience with Namibia. Okay, Justin, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you and um, talk a little bit about the history. You know? um, we, we used to say that um, interpretation can uh, be misunderstanding, but the data not, you know, numbers never lie. And um, we start in 991, back a little bit, 985, with a huge study about um, high resolution geochemistry of source rocks and oils in the whole coast of Brazil. And when we looked at, and I went to England to do my PhD in the largest center of molecular geochemistry that was Bristol University. And my thesis was um, uh, quantifying the DNA of all the oils about all the offshore Brazil. And um, for our surprise, 95 of all the oil was lacustrine came from the rift. And uh, at that time, 95% of our reserves was the pole salt. You know, that was, uh, was the, 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 the upper Cretaceous and uh, tertiary turbidites. It's very easy because uh, the seismic look, you know, that shining turbidites and people look at that and drill, but um, nobody had uh, technology to, to look below salt. But all the oil, let's say 20 billion barrels, um, are in reservoirs of the pool salt, and all these 20 billion barrels are lacustrine, Bahamian, sourced below salt. Then it was quite easy that looking all of this, um, we started what they had, and I put the first center of excellence uh, for the whole Petrobras, uh, center of excellence of geochemistry, and myself and my group, we started to publish and publish and say to people, go deeper, go deeper, go deeper. And this came um, in 1991, uh, when I come back to Brazil, I get all the oils from Africa, and I did the same study from Africa, and I published, and I present this in the World Petroleum Congress in Buenos Aires. And um, what's easy, I will say, my friends, go deeper in Brazil and go deeper in West Africa, because Angola has not been discovered, and Namibia has not been discovered. You have that uh, upper Cretaceous uh, turbidites in, in, in Gabon, Bon and you know, in some and the tertiary oil from from Nigeria, and that after this, things started to happen. It started the biggest discoveries in Angola in the pole salt of Angola, never in the pre salt, and then um, after huge numbers of uh, papers and discussions and so on, and, and also improvement of seismic, and people from the exploration department of Petrobras started to look in deeper, and they went deeper. And we have Lula, and after Lula, everything that you know. Then go deeper. People used to say, Mr. Go Deeper by God, that. And the same go deeper here, I told about Angola, because I show that the bases are counterparts and they share the same elements and process of the petroleum system. They are similar. Then why you don't you have here and you don't have it there? Then have how we start to have the discourse of Angola. And after I retired from Petrobras, I decided to go to Namibia. I said, come on, I have a chance because nobody believes in Namibia. And I went there, see a lot of investors and tried to put a company and people call me crazy. People say, come on guys, Namibia, you know, Chevron, Exxon, Oxide, they all deep there. There is no petroleum working petroleum system there. You have gas in Orange Basin that is the Kudu and even a small accumulation. I said, my friends, data don't lie. And I start, I went to Namibia, and I remember this, this will be very interesting because I'm, I went to give a talk. And for the whole people of Namibia, the, my first talk in Namibia about petroleum system and this this uh, this uh, uh, similarity between the two systems. And I didn't know that the president, the father of the nation, and, 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 and former president of Namibia, Dr. Sana Joma, that was doing geology <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy is, is the Nelson Mandela from Africa, from Namibia. It's my personal friend. And he was there, but I didn't know. 
and all the people from Nancor and the others, and I gave him my, 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 my talks and so on, and the head of Nancor, that was a German guy, stood up, and in front of about 100 people, they said, you are talking nonsense. We all know that we do not have oil in Namibia. We all know that it's only gas. You know what I mean? We all know that uh, we never, we drill, we never get an, any sample of oil. And I look at the guy and I said to everything, I say, my friends, put the hands um, up and tell me, do you believe in God? Then everybody, you know, the Namib is a German Christian came and everybody, yes. I say, have you seen God? No. Okay. If you have not seen God, why are you not seeing oil in Namibia? You say that there is no oil in Namibia. My friend, there was a turmoil in the audience. And I say, the oil will come when we drill and we, when we investigated the well that you drilled, because you did that 20 years ago. There is not a supercritical instruction for you to see if there is oil or not in the reservoir oil uh, rock that you drill. And when I finish, Dr. Sana Jama came to me and say, Mark, you, you have my support. You are coming to Namibia. I say, yes, I am coming to Namibia. And they, 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 this is the former president. He gave him all the support. Then when we see Namibia today as the next um, super giant province of the South Atlantic, we have it to not only to, to praise him, uh, to praise the Dr. Pohamba that was the president at the time that gave us all the support and the actual president, Dr. Hajj. Then without these guys, you don't get anywhere. 